I cannot even believe that I get to do this with you guys today. And honestly, welcome. Welcome to the Soul Families live show. I am absolutely thrilled that you're with us today. What that means is that you are taking time to really make your marriage happen and really show up for it. That's the best way to say it. What I'm here to help you do on a consistent basis is allow you to show up and be married and be married well, okay? That's the biggest thing. So welcome, welcome. This live show and podcast is right for you if you are married. If you are working on your personal growth, if you're working on your spiritual growth, if you are like, I have been married for five years and I don't know when to have a baby, this is for you if you are like, I was married last month and now we are combining all our things and I literally have no idea what to do every day in getting all of our stuff packed. Like, okay, I'm sitting right now in the studio, Francesca and David, my in-laws, they're amazing. And I just saw the most adorable thing next to their door to go outside. It was a reminder for David to get his lunch and for Francesca to turn off the lights. Guys, that's exactly the kind of thing that Alan and I used to do when we were literally months into marriage too. Like helpful notes that we can really make our lives better with. Okay, so this place, this live show and podcast is right for you if you are trying to better your marriage. That's it. And to explain why we're doing this, let me tell you a story. So for every wedding, we arrive before the bride gets her dress on. And we do that because more than anything, we want to be able to be there for whether it's her first look with her groom or her first prayer with her groom where they stand like back to back. That's a super special time and it's really critical for us as a company and me as a person, really that's what this is. Um, because before every first time he hears her, the groom, or she really embraces him, before that moment we pray over her. We pray over him and we say, dear Jesus, I ask that you be with this groom, that you lead, you help him become a leader of his family who depends on you. And I'm raising my hands because that is the prayer that continues to sanctify marriages and is continually answered throughout marriage. Okay, that's what we say for him. For her, we say, dear Jesus, I ask that you be with this bride, that you help her be the incredible equal and helpmate to her groom, and that you continue to remind her to lean on you as she leans on her groom, and that when she sees him, she sees Christ. And when he sees her, he sees Christ, because that is the biggest thing about marriage. We, my friends, are reflecting Christ and his church. That love is so defined and so significant and so meaningful that, oh my goodness, it needs so much prayer because work, it is work, you guys. It is legitimate work to continue to refine and sanctify your marriage so that it reflects the Lord. That is not an easy thing to do and you can't do it on your own. And so my heart is in love with weddings because... It's in love with the couples pursuing Christ. And on wedding days, I stand behind the camera, but I also stand behind the couple as they make their covenant. And on every phone call, every time we meet, and every, that final prayer before you walk down the aisle, every time we're praying over you and I'm praying so desperately over you because I care about what happens after you say I do. Every day past your wedding, those prayers are continually answered. And I want to be with you to continue to pray and to continue to guide and continue to stand beside you. Okay, now let's talk about you. Enough about me, enough about what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Why are we here? Why are you here? Is this right for you? Let's talk about you. After you said, you're I do, how were you? I asked you, I asked you all, on Instagram over here and on Facebook. You're both right here with me. And this is what she said. Most of you said you were married and it's magic. 
that means you're an absolute newlywed and I am so thrilled for that because girl that's like when you have the blood of Jesus running through you and the Holy Spirit and you've just been like tossed in a beautiful retreat over the weekend and you're coming back and you're like I'm fresh I'm new I'm excited and that's incredible a lot of you were there some of you were in the spot where you're married and it's manic. You are busy and overwhelmed and you just cannot seem to get like a grip on your schedule and you are starting to kind of come apart at the seams. Individual, you both individuals are coming apart a little bit. That's real life. Totally understand that season. That's probably like year two, three and forever because that is something that you continually deal with. All right, a couple of you said you're married and it's a mess a literal physical mess because you are trying to figure out why you guys have like three copies of the shack and two copies of the da Vinci code. You got to get things organized and get over to Goodwill. That's what my mom would say. <laughs> so some of you said it's married in a mess and a couple of you said I'm married and it's meh. I'm in a rut. I am in a rut. I'm married and it's meh. I've been married for a little while. I've been married for a long time. That one happens no matter how long you've been married and you guys for all of these we're here for you we're here for you that's how you said you were doing another thing that I remember asking you was okay after you got married did you experience any of these things one was did you experience expecting a lot from yourself or ex two or expecting a lot from him or her. Number three was changing your entire routine in order to make it work with the other persons or four, treating your other person differently. So the highest and most impactful one that I saw you guys totally resonate with was the fact that you expected oh, a lot. Let's just say like a ton, a, a heck of a lot and a lot of different things from yourself. So let's talk about that. What did you expect from yourself or your husband? And what did you expect from your husband? I can relate to both of those because let me tell you a story. Now, when I was little, my mom, okay, my mom is absolutely incredible. She's just the sweetest woman on the planet. Of course, everybody like tends to say that about their mom. So my mom was a stay at home mom, completely devoted to us, except for like these jobs that she got on the side in order to make all the ends meet that we needed. And she, no matter what, would like have dinner on the table by five. That was like a thing. That was a thing for my family. And it was incredible and it was consistent and it was awesome. Okay, just one thing. <laughs> My dad, when I was little, would love being home with us. Like, if we were all home together, we were like playing guitar, like sitting on, sitting on the couches, hanging out together. Like, we had quantities of time, like great amounts of time, and it was awesome. It was so awesome. And these are great things that my parents desired in order to really form our family. And I totally get that. And those things became a real part of me. So I expected to wife like my mother did. That meant dinner on the table every day at five. And I expected my husband to husband like my father did, which was like, let's always be hanging out and have a lot of quality time. And that sometimes worked and that sometimes didn't because I was pursuing an entire photography career on the side. So my heart was literally like half torn, like, oh no, we're not spending time. And he was like, it's okay, this is a great thing. Like, you're released, it's okay, go be free. Okay. You guys, even though I expected to wife like my mother did, and I expected to my husband to husband like my father did, I'm not my mother, and he is not my father. Like, the goals and the priorities and the personalities, like, there are so many things different. And inherently, that's an obvious statement, you guys. But truly, that was an expectation that I had of myself that wasn't rooted in Christ. And that's an expectation that I had of my husband that wasn't rooted in Christ. They were preferences, you guys. They were preferences. 
There were things that started to get in my brain and say, oh my gosh, you're not a good wife because you're not at home a lot right now. The season's really busy. Wedding season is really hurting things. When in reality, my husband was like, hey, it's season, it's okay, everything's all right. And to be fair, my dad would have been like, it's okay too. But internal struggle, you guys, I'm sure y'all women understand that. And I expected myself to have dinner on the table at five. And I like sacrificed a lot to make that happen. It was kind of ridiculous. And I was getting very angry and frustrated because that was not me and I couldn't make it happen. I just couldn't make it happen with what was going on in my life. So what lies have you been believing about how you should act or what you should do have been planted in your heart? What lies about the expectations you have of yourself have been planted in your heart that you need to uproot? And what expectations do you have of yourself that are not rooted in Christ? That are not rooted in Christ? Think about that. I will put that in the comments later because that is a serious question that takes a little bit of Jesus time and uncovery mm -hmm. to sit with. And I need you to sit with that one because that's the place where my friends, actual things will happen in your marriage. You can listen and watch the show all day long, but there's actual kind of like homework to go along with this so that actual changes are made in your heart and in your life. So what expectations do you have of yourself that are not rooted in Christ that need to be uprooted? And what pre-marriage relational experience and knowledge are you bringing in to your marriage? And is it all helpful? Now, my friends, here is what Jesus expects of you in your marriage relationship. He expects you to both be faithful, open, and able to grow. Able to grow, you guys. You are not perfect. You cannot be perfect. That is not how Jesus made you. I will say after like 20 years, maybe, maybe I'll have dinner every night on the table at five and that'd be pretty cool. But maybe that's just not how I was made or how my life was made to be in my marriage relationship. And that's totally fine too, my friends. That's totally fine. Because Jesus did not expect that. He expected me and you in your marriage relationship to be faithful, open, and able to grow. And my mom is saying, yes, this applies to older marrieds too. Yes, mom. Thank you. <laughs> it's true. It's true, you guys. Jesus doesn't expect perfection or dinner on the table at five. And this is not a shame game. There is no guilt here. There's no guilt that belongs in the place of Jesus' love. That guilt and shame that you're running in your mind saying, oh, I'm not enough. I'm not wifing it correctly. Quotes, air quotes. I'm not like all the other wives in town. And that's a bad thing. Come on, no, that's not true. That's not true. There's no guilt here. This is not a shame game. That's not what Jesus is about at all. The way you wife, won't look exactly like how others do because you're not like everyone else. You're not. And that's the beauty of it. So reset your expectations. You're not your mother. He's not your father. Friends, you've got this. For the guys tuning in, thank you. Ladies, what I want you to say to your man after you get out there and just hug him, thank Jesus for him, and let him hear you say forever I choose you forever. I choose you. Guys, I am so pumped that you joined me. I can't even believe that this is actually happening right now. Makes me so excited. My heart is so full. And I'm like, dang, I feel like we should do this tomorrow. But you know what? This is one time a week. So be here, be here. I cannot wait. Next week, we're gonna be right back here, most likely with this really cool microphone. I don't know if you can all see it pretty dope. And we will see you next week, 530. Have a great day, you guys. Praying for you.